Hi, in this video, we are going to solve IGCSE Computer Science Paper 1, and the paper code is 047813, and this paper is May, June 2023. Let's start solving the paper. Question number 1. Computer store data as binary. The binary number 1010110 is stored. Part A is convert the binary number to dendry. How we convert the binary number to dendry? We need the powers of 2. We write the number. Okay, and then we add the number, and we'll get this answer 174. Okay, the answer will be 174. Part B. Convert the binary number to hexadecimal. Now we convert the same number, this number, to hexadecimal. For this, we need to divide the number into four bits, four bits. Okay, this is the 8-bit number. We divide it four bits, four bits. And then we convert it to first dendry and then see the value in the hexadecimal. See here, this is the number. We write 1, 2, 4, 8. Okay, for first four bits and the second four bits. And then we write the number underneath those bits and then add them up. 8 plus 2 is 10 in dendry and, uh, and in hexadecimal, 10 is A. Second is 8 plus 4 plus 2 is 14 and 14 in hexadecimal is E. The answer will be AE. Okay, let's move to the next question. A logical left shift of three places is placed on the binary number. Give the 8-bit binary number that would be stored after the logical left shift. We need to perform the logical left shift on the above number. So let's see, this is a number, okay? Step number one will be the delete the three left bits. Okay, we just delete those three bits. This is step number one. And then we add three zeros on the right side okay this is the number that is our answer we can add it here this is the answer okay number two uh tick one box to show which statement is true about shift would have on the binary number what is the effect of the shift uh, would have on the binary number option a the, the least significant bits are lost no this is not true uh, option b the most significant bits are lost yeah this option is true the most significant bits these three bits are lost in the left shift let's see the option c the number has been divided by six no the number uh, has not been divided by six and option d is the number the number stays the same the, the the number is not the same after the left shift next question let's see add two eight bit binary numbers this is the first number okay and this is the second number using the binary addition method okay we need to uh, use the binary addition method to add those two numbers so first first review the binary addition rules okay first rule is zero plus zero is the sum is zero and the carry is zero Second rule is 1 plus 0, sum is 1 and carry is 0. Uh, next rule is 0 plus 1, same sum is 1 and carry is 0. Uh, then the fourth rule is 1 plus 1, the sum is 0 and the carry is 1. Okay. And the last rule is 1 plus 1 plus 1, the sum is 1 and carry is 1. Just keep those rules in mind and let's try to solve this question. Okay, here we have the, the questions. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 1, 0, 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, one, 0 plus 1 is 1. Okay, here we have 1 plus 1, which is sum is 0, right? And carry is 1. So we add the carry here. Now we have 1 plus 1 again. 1 plus 1, sum is 0. We add the 0 here. And 1 carry again. Next, 1 plus 1, 0. Okay, 0 is the, the, the sum. And 1 carry. Okay, then one this one will come here again. This is the overflow. Okay, you can see this is, we have the 8-bit number. And this is the 9-bit. This is the overflow error. Okay, you need to highlight this one as the error. Next question. The dendry number 301 needs to be stored. Calculate the least number of bits that can be used to store the dendry number 301. We need to calculate the least number of bits. First, let's divide the, the get the convert the number. First, let's convert the 301 to binary. Okay, 301 divide by 2 is 150. 150 divide by 2 is 75. 75 divided by 2, 37. 37 divided by 2 is 18. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 9 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now let's count the bits. How many bits we have? So if the number is even, the reminder will be 0. If the number is odd, the reminder will be 1. 1. This is 0. 1. 1. 0 and 1. Let's count the bits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. We need 9 bits to store this number. So this is, should be our answer. Okay, let's move to the next question. The hexadecimal number A4D needs to be stored. Calculate the least number of bits that can be used to store the hexadecimal number A4D. We need to calculate the least number of bits. We know that one hexadecimal number 
is represented as the four binary bits okay in this way we can say a a need those four bits four need four bits d need four bits we can say we need 12 bits to store this hexadecimal number in binary question number two library has self checkout system that allow customers to register books that they want to borrow the self checkout system has central processing unit or cpu the cpu has two cores state the purpose of a core in a cpu the purpose of the cpu core is to execute the instruction part b the cpu is replaced with one that has four cores explain the effect this has on the self checkout system okay we know that uh, one core can execute one instruction at a time but if we have two four cores just mean four instruction can be executed at the same time a four core or a quad core processor will improve the performance of the cpu a quad core cpu can process four instruction at once or at the same time okay let's see this illustration to understand for example you can see uh, the, the first one has a, a single core uh, cpu second one is a dual core and the third one is the quad core as you can see in the animations a, a single core can only uh, process or execute one instruction at, at a time a dual core can uh, process or execute two instructions at the same time and the quad core can execute four instructions at the same time okay so you can think of the the core as a worker one worker can do one job at a time if you have two workers they can do two jobs at the same time similarly if you have four workers uh, they can do the four job at once so we can say that the performance will be improved if the four things are being done in one second or at one time the cpu contains register and buses describe the role of a register in the cpu a register is a type of primary storage a uh, register is used to hold address data and instructions we have different types of uh, registers in the cpu that hold different types of data address and instructions and also the data so we can store those information inside the register part b identify one bus that can be found in the cpu and, and explain its purpose in the fast decode and execute cycles we know we have three buses three different buses in the cpu we have address bus we have data bus and we have control bus okay let's see the purpose of the data bus the data bus is used to transfer data between the cpu and other components of a computer system similarly address bus is used to transfer data between the cpu and other components of the computer system and the control bus is used to transmit the control signal to different components in the computer system okay next question the self-checkout system allowed the user to input their library membership number Give two appropriate input devices that would allow the user to do this. We need to input the number. There could be two devices. One could be the keyboard, okay, keyboard for uh, typing the membership number, and second one could be the microphone. Maybe they can use it to for the voice type typing. They just speak their number and automatically type. These are the two devices that can be used. Next question is the self checkout system uses a monitor to display information about the book. Users who are blind also need to use the self checkout system. Give an appropriate output device that would allow a blind user to be given this information. How can we give information to a blind person? A blind person uh, can hear, right? We can use the speakers or headphones for the blind people. They can use these two output devices to get the information from the checkout system. Part F, the self-checkout system uses two types of primary storage. Circle two type of primary storage that would be used in the system. Okay, so the first option is CD. CD is not the primary storage, it's a secondary storage. DVD, DVD is also secondary storage. Okay, uh, then the hard disk drive, this is also a, a secondary storage. RAM, yes, RAM is the correct answer. RAM is the primary storage. Okay, next one is the read only memory or ROM. Yes, ROM is also a type of primary storage. Universal serial bus, USB or flash memory drive. No, these are not the primary storage, these are also the secondary storage the two options ram and rom are correct okay let's move to the next question the self-checkout system is linked to a stock control system that is updated every time a book is borrowed from the library a microprocessor is used in the stock control system to update the stock explain the role of microprocessor in this system and how it is used to update the stock when the books are borrowed we can explain this process in three steps step number one a microprocessor receive the book data from the self-checkout system step number two microprocessor compare receive book data to the store book data and step number three if book is found decrement the book stock by one if not the display the error message that's how this works Question number three. Five network terms or definitions are given in the table. Complete the table by giving the missing term or definition. First uh, term is the router. What is a router? A router is a network device that is responsible for transmitting data packet to their correct destination. Okay. Next, we have the definition. The address is assigned by the network and used to identify a device on a network. Which, what is that address? This is called the IP address. Next, we have a term is called the network interface card. So what is NIC? NIC is a network hardware that enables a device to connect to a network. 
Okay. Next, we have the definition. This address is assigned by the manufacturer and is used to uniquely identify the device. This is called the MAC address because MAC address is assigned by the manufacturer. Okay. MAC stands for Media Access Control Address. Last definition. This can be hardware or software based and filters traffic coming into and out of a network. It, it is a firewall. Okay. Question number four. A programmer writes a computer program in a high level language. Okay. Tick one box to show which statement is benefit of writing a program in high level language instead of low level language. Okay. Option A. The program can directly manipulate hardware. No, it is incorrect. The program is machine independent. Yes, this is true. If you write a program in high level language, that program is a machine independent. For example, if you write it on the MacBook, you can take it to the uh, Windows PC and you can run it on the Windows because you just need to compile and do everything again. Option C, the program is more memory efficient. No, it is not always the case. Uh, option D, the program is quicker to execute. No, it is not quicker to execute. Only correct option, uh, only correct option is D. Next question, translators are used to translate the high-level language that it can be processed by the computer. State what the high-level language is translated into. The high-level language is translated into the low-level language. Okay, uh, number two, yeah. one translator converts and executes the code line by line. Okay, identify which type of translator would do that. It would be the interpreter because interpreter translates the code line by line. And number three, one translator creates an error report displaying all the errors in the code before it uh, can be executed. Identify which type of translator would do this, which would be compiler. The last question, one translator creates an executable file. Identify which type of translator would do such as compiler. Okay. Question number five, complete and annotate the diagram to demonstrate how packet switching is used to transmit data across a network, including the use of routers from device A to device B. This is the original diagram in the paper. Okay. So you can understand this idea from the below diagram. Okay. How it works. For example, this is the sender computer. And this is the receiver. Center want to transmit a picture to the receiver. Step number one will be that the picture will be broken down into small pieces. So step number one, data is broken down into small pieces. And then each each packet, okay, each packet take the separate route to read the destination. Okay, each packet is taking different route to read the destination. So once all the data reach the destination, then they have to reassemble according to their uh, packet number. That's how the packet switching works. You can just use this type of diagram and explain. Okay. Let's move to the next question. A student is writing a help guide about how to recognize and avoid cybersecurity threat of farming. Give three appropriate solutions he could include. Okay, first solution would be check the website address bar uh, and look for the HTTPS. If there is no HTTPS, do not enter your personal information uh, into that website. Number two, avoid clicking on suspicious links. If you receive an email and that an email contains some link, ask you to click on the link and just go to some website. Avoid clicking the link if you are not 100% sure. Last point is install and maintain antivirus software. Make sure you have an updated antivirus on your computer and you regularly scan your computer for the viruses. Okay, next question. The student also wants to include information in the help guide about the use of social engineering as a cybersecurity threat. Describe what is meant by the social engineering and include one example of social engineering in your answer. Okay, so let's see. Social engineering is the type of cyber crime in which users are manipulated into behaving in a way that they would not normally do. An example of social engineering is the phishing email and wishing. Option C, the student includes information about the security solution of access level. Describe what is meant by the access levels. Okay, what is access level? Access level is a security feature that controls who can access and use certain resource on a computer system. Okay, number two, it is typically assigned to users and groups of users and can be based on their roles, responsibilities, or other features. And the last one is a higher access level grants users more privilege, allowing them to perform more actions on the system while a lower access level restrict their access. Okay. Question number seven. The rule base and the inference engines are two components of an expert system. Identify two components of an expert system. Two other components would be knowledge base and the user interface. Next question. Describe the role of the rule base in expert system. What is the role of the rule base in the expert system? Rule base stores rule for the inference engine and these tools are used by inference engine when answering the question. Complete the statement about a distributed denial of service or deed of the tag. Use the term from the list. Some term in the list will not be used. You should only use a term once. Okay, we have both terms okay, here, these terms, and we need to use them to fill in the blank. First, okay. The attacker encourage people to download onto their computer. The attacker encourage people to download malware onto their computer systems. This will turn each computer into a bot. Okay, we have bot. Bot 
creating a network creating a network of bot is called the botnet when the attacker wants ddos to take place uh, repeated requests are simultaneously sent from the computer to a web server okay this causes it to crash meaning uh, the user can no longer access the website that is stored on the hardware let's move to the next question question number nine a device can be given an ip address this can be ipv4 or ipv6 we know there are two types of ip addresses okay give one similarity between ipv4 and ipv6 they can both be used to identify a device on a network or both can be static or dynamic part b describe two differences between ipv4 and ipv6 so here is a list of the differences ipv4 is a 32-bit address ipv6 is 128-bit address okay ipv4 uses binary numbers and ipv6 uses hexadecimal numbers ipv4 is separated by a dot okay and ipv6 is separated by a colon or dash let's move to the next question a web page is requested using an ip address question one identify the system that stores a database of uniform resource locators or urls and their corresponding ip address that is the that system is called domain name system okay number two identify the software that send re a request to the ip address to obtain the the web page data that is the web browser okay the software that we use is web browser question number 10 a computer has pages a b and c that are stored in ram a d needs to be sent to ram but ram is full a b is not needed immediately explain how the virtual memory can be used in this scenario okay to understand or to answer this question let's go to the next slide and i will give you the illustration you can understand okay we know the virtual memory is extension to the ram when the ram is full it then the process that are not currently being used to the virtual memory to understand how the virtual memory works let's see this animation let's say the user is working on a computer he opened the first application maybe it's photoshop okay that application goes to the ram then he opened the next application maybe this is powerpoint it also goes to the ram right next you open a, another application maybe a pdf reader right you open a pdf file this application again goes to the ram now the ram is full okay and this time he wants to open the web browser for example let's say he wants to open the microsoft edge or google chrome but the ram is full what will happen the, the computer will see which application the user is not currently using and move that application to the virtual memory and make the room for the new application when click on the google chrome the computer will uh, see which application is not being used let's say in this case the application a is not currently in use so it will move this application to the virtual memory and make the room for the application d okay or the new application that's how the virtual memory works in in the future when the user want to use the application a computer will check again from the, in the ram which application is not being used then move that application to the virtual memory and a will come back to the ram okay let's see another scenario in this case we don't have the virtual memory what will happen if you don't have the virtual memory in our system Okay. In this case, let's say a user opened the first application, it goes to the RAM, he opened the second application, it also moved to the RAM, he, he opened the third application, it also moved to the RAM, no problem, right? Or, but what if he tries to open the fourth application and the RAM is full? If he tries to open the fourth application, the computer system will crash because there is no place in the RAM. That is the effect of the virtual memory. If you don't have a virtual memory, your system will crash. Okay, let's move to the next question, question number 11. Software is installed on a computer to manage files, memory, and multitasking. Okay, state the name of the software that can do these tasks. That is called the operating system or OS. B. Give one task that software allows the users user to do to manage files. So it allows users to cut, copy, paste, delete, move, rename, and many things on the on the files. Okay. C. Describe what is meant by managing memory. Allocate enough memory for each process. Okay. Second one is make sure the, the two processes do not try to access the same memory location. These are the two things that you can write. The last question is D. A signal is sent within the computer to allow multitasking to occur. State the name of this type of signal. That is called the interrupt. Okay. That's all. We are done with this paper. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye.